Drew McCaskill's here. He's a numbers guy. And um, I asked him to task put a task together because this is the year of accomplishment. We're going to be doing some stuff, right? And I was reading about these endowments and all of these uh, things that other people are able to do because they have money on their books, money, assets, and things. And you went to an HBCU. You went to I Morehouse, did. the great Morehouse, Morehouse uh, which is also the alma mater of MLK and a host of other great people, including Spike Lee and Spike Samuel Lee, Jackson. I mean, Spike we can Jackson. go stay here all day. Yeah. But the endowment at Morehouse, yeah, not the business. Howard University just got a ton of money, got one of the largest sums of money ever in its history for a STEM program that they're doing. But they didn't get it from us. <laughs> right. But I'm not mad. I'm yeah. happy. I'm we, happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Money. I'm happy. But it sparked me to say, well, if this is the largest endowment in the history of Howard, what the freak? What are we doing? So you got numbers. Hit it. So the the Howard announcement was great. They got $10 million. It was uh, it's the largest uh, donation in the college's 153-year history. $10 million is the <laughs> largest donation in Howard University's history. And listen, first of all, HBCUs, let's just run the numbers on HBCUs, right? Like over half of all African-American professionals are graduates of HBCUs. More than 50% of the African-American public school teachers and 70% of African-American dentists all graduated from HBCUs. Like think about it like this. 75% of all black PhDs went to HBCU. 46% of all black business executives went to HBCUs. 50% of black engineers graduated from an HBCU. 80% of black federal judges went to undergrad at an HBCU. 85% of the black doctors in this country went to an HBCU. 50% of the black attorneys in this country went to an HBCU. 75% of black military officers went to HBCUs. 40% of black dentists went to HBCUs. 50% of the black pharmacists in this country went to HBCU. 75% of the black veterinarians in this country graduated from an HBCU. I say all that to say HBCUs are very important to this community, to African-Americans, to our progress, to our educational attainment, to our ability to achieve. But here's the deal on HBCUs as it relates to endowments. It is woefully, we are woefully underfunded. Right. If you take a look at um, if you look at HBCUs as, as as it relates to our white counterparts, the reality is, is that we're literally operating across the board at about one eighth of the endowments of our PWI counterparts. One eighth of the endowment. Wow. Yeah. One eighth. One eighth. And Howard has the most. Howard has the largest endowment of any historically black college or university, and their endowment is uh, about six hundred and eighty million dollars. Howard is number one. Spelman is number two at three hundred and eighty nine million dollars. And a lot of that Oprah gave them a like, uh, hundred years ago. Uh, yeah, they, they they've gotten <laughs> and yeah. Spelman started off with Rockefeller money. Okay. So that's that that's foundational. A, that's foundational, right? Hampton University is number three at two hundred and eighty five million. Meharry Medical School, a hundred and sixty million. It's the largest black um, medical school in the country. In the country. Morehouse is number five with hundred and forty five million dollars as as its um as its endowment. Think wow. about it like this. Spellman's endowment is twice what Morehouse's is, and they're like right across the street from each other. I mean, but and and those are the top those are the top five. When you start to get look at Winston Salem State, forty six million is their endowment. There are people in this country with forty six million dollars that are just walking around. You know what I mean? Facts. Facts. Um, not Texas, in this room, but not in this room. Somewhere. Russ College has an endowment of forty million dollars. Norfolk State, twenty four million twenty four million dollars is their is their total endowment. And what what does an endowment allow a school to do? So, like, let's let's put it in perspective. Put it in perspective. Your endowment allows a school one to to is part of that money goes to just. Some of the, most of that money is never spent. It's invested so that the school can, um, so that the school has money to actually run. A lot of the like a, a lot pension of, plan or exactly. like for major, you know, unions have a pension yeah. that they put into. So that money is the invested so that the people in that pension get vested and they right. get money when they retire. So you're so you have your endowment. A lot of that money is invested so that you use the dividends off of that money to actually run operations, right? In addition to tuition, all of those things. You get a chance to pay you pay professors and all that kind of stuff. 
part of the issue with um, with where we are in terms of just how the endowments are much smaller than you think. Here's a here's a reference. UCLA's endowment, five billion dollars. With a B. With a B. Now I just told you that the 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 largest endowment at an HBCU is Howard University. They at, don't even have a billion dollars. At six hundred and eighty million, right? UNC Chapel Hill, five billion dollars. Emory University in Atlanta, seven point three billion dollars. Rutgers, one point three billion dollars. Rutgers just got a black president. Yeah. Just got a black president last week. Yale University, thirty billion dollars is their endowment. Harvard University, forty-one billion dollars is their endowment. So think about, just think about that in terms of what HBCUs mean to our community versus what the endowment is by comparison to PWIs, and some of it is our fault. Like I'm going to be just really, really honest. Alumni giving is abysmal, and mega donors rarely support HBCUs because alumni giving is abysmal. Your uh, U.S. Um, News and World Report. So what you're saying is that money likes money. Money so likes if, money. If we're investing in our universities and colleges, then other people will invest in our universities yeah. and colleges. The first thing that mega donors look at, even if it's foundations, the first thing that they tell you, I've been on boards of it, uh, boards of nonprofit organizations for the last 15 years, and one of the things that we always look at um, for the foundations that I've been on that actually give money to other organizations is what does your current giving look like? We're not going to give you money to survive. We give money to thrive, right? That's the that's the general principle for most foundation giving. That's also the general principle for most mega donors. Spellman, um, if you take a look at, you know, Howard said that their biggest their biggest um, gift was ten million dollars. Spellman has had like huge gifts from um, from folks, but the Spellman model is the HBCU model that we need. Let me tell you why Spelman, why Spelman College is going to be the highest endowed HBCU in the country in just a little while. The Spelman model, Spelman College plays the long game. They, they do four things that I feel like will make them the, mo the highest endowed HBCU in history very soon. The number one thing is that they focus on the Spelman brand. Spelman knows how to get attention and awards for the things that they do extremely well. They are consistently um, U.S. News and World Report's number one rated HBCU consistently year over year. And they understand the importance of that ranking and they understand the importance of rankings and how you manage the brand. That's number one. They've also had presidents who really understand branding and understand marketing, right? That's that is number one. They play the long game because they also look at their trustees and who they put on the board of trustees. Spellman's um, the the largest gift that Spellman, on the other hand, has ever gotten was they just got a thirty million dollar investment in the college from a board of trustees from a member of the board of trustees, they have a couple of billionaires on their board of trustees, right? So you start off with a good strategy. The the um, Rhonda Stryker and her husband, William Johnson, uh, Rhonda Stryker is on the board of trustees at Spelman. She joined the board in 1997. They gave their thirty mil their $30 million gift to Spelman just in the last three years. So they played the long game. You have a billionaire on your board, on your board of trustees. You you get an intimate relationship with them. Even if it takes 10 years to get $30 million, that was 10 years well invested, right? Hello. They also have on their board of trustees Rosalind Brewer, right, who um, who was the CEO of, who's a Spelmanite. She was the CEO of, uh, of Starbucks. I'm, I'm sorry. She was the CEO of Sam's Club, and now she's the COO of Starbucks. Play the long game. Who you have on your board of trustees is really important. The other thing is alumni giving. Spellman has one of the highest levels of alumni giving, alumni because they're all women. Alumna. Alumna giving in, um, in all Wait, of just, HBCUs. Just a little Latin. U.S., alumnus, mm -hmm. male, yeah. alumna, alumna, woman, alumni with the I, plural. Alumni, plural for women. E-A-E. Mm-hmm. So, uh, spell, right. so right. amongst their alums, yes, okay. 39.3% of all Spelman alums give back to the school. Now, to put that into context for you, the average HBCU alumni giving rate across eight, all HBCUs is 11.2%. Wow. 
Spellman focuses on alum on alums giving back. Alumni giving is thirty nine point three percent. So that means almost every woman who graduates from Spellman gives back okay. to that organization. That's how you get mega donors attention, because if the alums are giving mega donors say this is a safe place to put my money. Fourth, ethical leadership. And Spellman made the decision. The but the previous highest um, donation for years was the twenty million dollars that Bill and Camille Cosby gave to Spellman College. Spellman and uh, they gave that money in, in nineteen ninety eight. Spellman made the decision before Cosby was even convicted to give that money back after the Cos- after Cosby got into his trouble. They made the decision to end the William and Camille Olivia Hanks Cosby endowed professorship wow. and all and return the money associated with it to the foundation established by Camille Cosby. Wow. They gave the money back. And there were alums and donors after they made that decision who said, we are going to make sure that because of your ethical leadership, you'll be made whole for that so that you don't miss a step. Alumni, I mean, donations and giving went up after Spellman gave that money back to the Cosby's. So the Spellman model is what is what HBCs you need to do. It's simple. The brand, who you have as trustees, who making sure that alums are giving money back, and then ethical leadership. We're going to stay on this HBCU space on, as a show. We have the president of Howard who will be coming back through, and let's get the president of Spellman on as well. Uh, but the Howard uh, $10 million donation, the highest ever, came from the Karsh Family Foundation, and it was specific to uh, fund a STEM program uh, at Howard, which I think is really, really important. Uh, they will rename the STEM program the Karsh STEM Scholars Program, uh, which was founded in 2017. So this is a relatively new yes. STEM program that they then were able to, in less than three years, get a sizable donation, the largest in their history. Yeah. And I think, be- and they are the largest endowed uh, HBCU. So they're doing something right as well. Absolutely. Headed up by a man who's a medical doctor who also uh, suffers from sickle cell. Uh, so he's got that that whole space, uh, is, you know, keeping Howard at the forefront of research and things like that. Super important to have this. So let's t- talk about that. And if yeah. you're a Howard alum or a Spelman alum, I'd love to hear if you've donated. Yeah. 866-801-8255. No shame. Yeah. But we have to be intentional. I was going to say for African Americans who are who are looking at all of the their donations that they're going to actually give that to to charitable charitable donations whatever the case is your tax write offs what you're looking at there is no better investment in terms of charitable giving than an HBCU that's the reason why I named off all of those things that HBCUs give back to our community the percentages of black professionals in every single category is we giving a lot of money to a lot of churches out here black folks that we ain't seeing no fruit from it you see fruit every spring from a historically black college and university Every spring. I love it. I love it. Do you want to make one correction? I yeah, do want to make one I know, correction. I know. I know. I know. Go ahead, Because you know what's driving me yes, crazy. Yes, I know. I know. Drew so I, I, one correction on that. It, the actual number of dentists who graduate, both black dentists who graduated from historically black colleges and universities is 70%. Mm. Orig- at the end, I said 40%, but that number was of, of dentists who were over a certain age. The actual total number is the first thing is the first thing I said, which was 70%. 70%.